a note that I can't play. Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Got AC like an hour and a half ago. It's still pretty warm in here. Um, didn't have it for like three days, so that's been super fun. Just super enjoyed not having air conditioning. Anyway, let's talk about some changes. I sold the Holton 258 in the flat case. Super cool instrument. Should I have sold it? I don't know. I could probably use it literally like this week. I'm playing some cool stuff where I could use a horn that does exactly what it does. But I sold it. It's gone now. And I traded off my carbon fiber slide that I forgot that I owned. <laughs> it's been sitting in a case. I just I haven't been thinking about it. I have my two really nice dual bore slides, Shires and Edwards. They sound great. They're easy to play. And I just kind of swap between them. And I just have not seen the need to even get that out. And I forgot that I had it until someone messaged me and they were like, hey, you want to trade that carbon fiber slide for uh, something really cool? And I was like, sure, <laughs> I forgot that I had that. And uh, this would be a really cool instrument to own. This is an old P22 George Roberts model. You can check out the engraving right here. Look at that, what does it say? Custom crafted P22 George Roberts model, F.E. Olds and Son, Fullerton, California. Um, so George Roberts obviously played for a very long time in the Los Angeles area. Um, probably most known for playing the Con 70H, but he played a bunch of other stuff, had artist contracts with a bunch of different manufacturers. And for a while, he played Olds, because Olds is, was based right here in the area made some pretty cool instruments and he designed this very much in the George Roberts manner. This, the P22, is what I think is the last George Roberts model. I'm pretty sure, again, do not quote me on this, uh, I'm pretty sure the first George Roberts model <clears throat> doesn't have a model name or a model number I should say. It's just the old George Roberts which is tuning and slide and is otherwise pretty similar to this. Just has a smaller smaller rotor and I'm sure there's a couple other changes and then along comes the S22 which I don't think are marked George Roberts they might be um, I used to I borrowed one long term for a while um, but that's pretty much exactly like this but with a small rotor valve and then um, I think they realized you know what those rotors they're pretty small and so they developed the P22 which has a larger valve um, these were sold alongside the uh, S24 and the P24, which are double valve versions, largely like these instruments, as far as I know. I, they might have some other changes. I have played S22, P24, and now P22. Um, so I've played kind of like half of the instruments that existed um, in this time period, and I like them all. Really cool horns. Definitely not like a modern bass trombone the way that we think. Uh, but still very playable, very cool instruments. Very much in the old um, way of making trombones, which are like kind of strange, kind of quirky, not something you necessarily want to use now, but also like really good, easy to play, makes a really cool sound. Um, and this is kind of something I've been looking for for a while. Like I said, I borrowed an S22 for a while, an undergrad that was trashed. I mean, the slide was pretty much gonzo. Um, there are a bunch of problems in the bell section as well. I think some stuff was frozen. Um, and I really liked playing it. It made a cool sound. It was actually pretty easy to play, minus the bad slide. And so I've low-key been looking for something like this for a long time. Um, I say low-key because, of course, singles, single valve bass trombones, are useless. I have no use for them. I've owned, like, seven at this point, and I never keep them, or I make them into double into uh, double valve instruments because they're just not useful as single valve instruments. So why did I get this? Well, I traded it for something I didn't need um, and forgot that I owned. And this is in immaculate shape. Uh, this is like the best condition olds that I can remember seeing ever. And this is like 50 plus years old. It's got the typical um, olds uh, construction, all nickel. Everything is nickel. Everything is nickel. Every oh, and a red belt. So literally the entire instrument except for the valve casing and the saddle for the uh, mechanism here, which are yellow breasts, everything is nickel. And then you have a nice red bell on the end. 
I'm not sure why George wanted to go this direction. Maybe it was a, a decision made by Olds and they just had a cheap nickel supplier or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but of course, the cons that he used to play were pretty much all yellow grass, maybe with a, a nickel crook. So I'm not sure why there's such a drastic change when a lot of the instrument is actually relatively similar to his old cons. These have a wide slide, which the cons didn't, but they also have a long slide, short bell section. You can see how short this is compared to the F attachment wrap, um, which gives you a very long slide to play, like low Cs with this tune to F, and even low Bs, yes. Mr. Uh, I don't believe that there's a low C on the instrument. This has got a really long slide. <laughs> It is just the tiniest bit sharp, and this is tuned to F. If you tune it just a little farther out, and you kind of forget about low F and first, you have a real C all the way out there. It's it's farther than I would want to play on a regular basis, but I'm not a superhuman like uh, George Roberts was. And he was superhuman in two ways. One of those ways was that he could play everything on a single. He can just like play all these Bs and stuff with one valve. And the other way is that he can deal with the awful balance of these single valve instruments. The 50B is playable because you can put a counterweight on the back. And then it's pretty well balanced, it's actually pretty comfortable. But the cons, the olds, a lot of these instruments have no way to install a counterweight easily. And they're just so front heavy. I don't know how people deal with that, um, playing instruments like this, or playing German trombones, which are usually very front heavy as well. And they just do it, and they play well and have no problems. I can't do that. I torque my wrist so hard trying to hold the instrument back, this motion like this, while playing. And I just, I, there's some secret that I'm missing. Um, even with the strap here, I can't play this for more than a couple minutes. So ergonomics, definitely a bit of a problem. What am I going to do with this? I don't know. It's really cool. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to play it anywhere. Like, even when you play trombone quartets, the bass trombone part, it's going to have low Cs, it's going to have low Bs. And even though this can technically play them, I just, why put myself through that when I just play a double and have no problems? So, for now, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to play it a little bit. I'm going to have some fun with it. See if I can play some duets and stuff that don't go too low. And uh, maybe it'll get two valves, and maybe it'll get uh, sold. We'll see. Anyway, that's my new P22 George Roberts. I have other stuff coming on the way, and thank you for uh, surviving my crappy phone period where I was using this. It's gone now. I have a nice phone, and it makes good videos. Thanks, science. Anyway, that's all I got. Bye-bye.